The worst meat was actually poultry chicken. Up to triple the rates for every 50 grams of poultry consumption. A quarter of a chicken breast, triple your risk. And finally, infections. After the common cold, the most common infection is of the urinary tract. We know for decades that it's bacteria creeping up from the rectum that cause bladder infections, but only recently did we figure out where this rectal reservoir of, of bladder infecting E. coli was coming from, chicken. We now have proof of a direct link between farm animals, meat, and bladder infections, solid evidence that urinary tract infections can be a zoonosis, bladder infections as an animal to human disease. The best way to prevent bladder infections is the same way you best prevent any infections, by not getting infected in the first place. Now, can't you just use a meat thermometer, cook the meat thoroughly? No, because of cross-contamination. We've known for decades that you give someone a frozen chicken to prepare and cook in their own kitchen, as they normally would, a multitude of antibiotic-resistant E. coli jumps from the chicken into the gut of the volunteer even before eating it. This jump happens after the bird is prepared, but before any meat was eaten. So not only did it not matter how well the chicken was cooked, it didn't even matter if you eat any, right? It's the bringing it into the home and handling it. Within days, the drug-resistant chicken bacteria had multiplied to the point of becoming a major part of the person's gut flora, right? They're like the chicken bacteria like taking over. What if you're really careful in the kitchen, though? The effectiveness of hygiene procedures for prevention of cross-contamination from chicken carcasses in the domestic kitchen. They went into five dozen homes, gave them each a chicken, asked them to cook it. After they were done cooking, there was bacteria from chicken feces, Campylobacter salmonella, both serious human pathogens, everywhere. On the cutting board, utensils, on their hands, on the fridge handle, cupboard, oven handle, doorknob. This was before um, they cleaned up. What about after cleaning? Still, pathogenic um, fecal bacteria everywhere. And this was just, you know, regular retail chicken bought at the supermarket. It's not like the researchers, like, inoculated the chickens with bacteria. They just come prepackaged uh, from the store with pa pathogens. Obviously, people don't know what they're doing in the kitchen, so they took another group of people, gave them specific instructions. After you cook the chicken, you have to wash everything with hot water and detergent. Right? They were told specifically, wash the cutting board. Right? Knobs on the sink, the faucet, the fridge, the doorknobs, everything, okay? And the researchers still found disease-causing fecal matter chicken bugs everywhere. Fine. The last group. This time, they're going to insist that people bleach everything. The dishcloth immersed in bleach disinfectant, then they spray the bleach on all these surfaces, right? Let the bleach disinfectant sit there for five minutes, all right. And they still found Campylobacter and salmonella on some utensils, the dishcloth, the, the counter around the sink, and the cover. Right? Definitely better, but still, right? Unless our kitchen is like some biohazard lab, right? The only way to guarantee not leaving infection around your kitchen is to not bring it into your house in the first place. Now the good news is it's not like you eat chicken once and you're colonized for life. In this study, chicken bacteria only seem to last about 10 days before your good bacteria could kind of muscle it out of the way. Right? The problem is, though, that most families eat chicken more than once every 10 days, so they'd be constantly reintroducing these pathogens into their systems. What if you already have a urinary tract infection, though? For example, can cranberry juice treat uh, bladder infections? Find out in my video, can cranberry juice treat bladder infections? Of course, eating chicken can give you regular food poisoning, too, and foodborne pathogens were ranked last year to figure out which was kind of the worst. Number one on their list was salmonella, the leading cause of food poisoning-related hospitalization and the number one cause of food infection-related death. Yet it remains legal to sell salmonella-contaminated chicken in the supermarket. 
It all goes back to a famous case in 1974 when the American Public Health Association sued the USDA, saying, wait a second, you can't put a stamp of approval on meat contaminated with our leading foodborne killer. What could the USDA possibly say in meat's defense? They pointed out that, look, there's salmonella infections linked to dairy and eggs, too. So since there are numerous sources of contamination, it would be unjustified to single out the meat industry. That's like the tuna industry saying, yeah, no, no reason to you know, put you know, label levels of mercury on tuna cans because people could get exposed eating a thermometer, too. <laughs> right? Okay.